Hey guys, in this video what I want to cover is the actual FPS character component. So what all this is used for is kind of like what I mentioned in the first video. It's kind of like an interface between the animation system and all of your held actors such as like a firearm or a rangefinder and that. So it's kind of like the core of the system that links you to everything else. If you can kind of try to visualize that. So let's go ahead and just kind of parse through some of the settings here and see what all they do. So starting from the top here, we have is third person default. So basically what that allows it to do is play the third person poses as opposed to the first person. So if we head over to the firearm, we can actually see an example of that. So I come over to the firearm, I go to poses. You can see we have first person, short stock, base pose, sprint pose, high and low port. And then we have the same thing, but for third person. So third person, short stock, base pose, sprint pose, high and low port. So it allows you to switch poses to that you have the good view of the third person. So this is in case you want to switch between first and third person, you can still use all the procedural stuff for it. Now next up, this is a new feature in 5.4, and this is auto set owner. Ugh, my throat started going out. So auto set owner on firearm, on equipped firearm, and set aiming actor. So basically this will, instead of going through, and you can see here, where we have server where we pick up the firearm, you can see what I'm doing is as I pick up the firearm, I'm calling set order on it, and then I eventually call equip. So basically, when you call equip firearm, it'll automatically set the owner to whoever is being equipped with it. So next up is to use parent socket for aiming. So this is if you have a dedicated camera bone that is attached to, let's say, a, you know, basically you would have a your head, then you would have a camera bone on your head somewhere. This would allow you to use that so you can still animate that camera bone while still being able to use the procedural aiming. Next up is the camera socket and the camera socket parent bone. So you can kind of get a rough idea on what they do. So as I've been going through and commenting stuff, so this is the socket that the camera is to be attached to. So in my case, I have a socket called camera on the head. So then I have to set the socket parent bone to head. So then the right hand axis. So you can kind of read by the description. So Y axis is for the mannequin, but basically this is for different character skeletons that are not following with the mannequin. So what I mean by that is on the firearm itself, I go over here to default, go to camera settings. So actually I have a hollow sight. So let me go to that really fast. Oops. So when I go over to the camera settings for this guy and we have our camera distance at negative five. So when I hit play and I aim, you can see how far I am from the optic. And if I go to, I'll just reset it to zero, you can see now it's pushed farther away. So it's basically going forward and back. So that's what that aims to solve because in some cases when you have your bones oriented in it differently for like the, po the base pose, you, it will move them in a different direction. So I remember one guy, I don't remember what his skeleton was from, but basically, instead of moving the firearm forward or back, it was moving it up or down. So this is what that aims to solve, so you can have different uh, orientations. Then we have these two, which you can really ignore. They're kind of set to reassure that the firearm gets attached. So this is mostly for basically on startup. So if you're first loading in and all that kind of stuff and you have a default spawned firearm, this is to help ensure that it will in fact be attached. Now moving on, we have our animation section. So this is our movement component control speed, or movement control movement component sprint speed. So you want to set this to the max speed that you can move in your movement component, or just in general. So you can see here's the character movement component, and we have our max walk speed. So right now it's at 150. Let's pretend this is you set it to 350. But in my case, I have a sprinting setup, so I have mine's max speed set to 350. So what I did was I set my max movement component speed to 350 here. Then we have the max look up and look up, or sorry, look up and look down angle. So this is how far you can look up and down. So lower is less. So for example, for the look up, if I set this one to 45 and the look down to 10, you can see I look up. This is as high as I can look up. And then when I look down, that's as far as I can look down. So that's what those go through and alter. 
Next up, we have our lean angle. So default is 35. So that's how far you can lean left to right. So left and right. So the higher is farther. Well, obviously. So if I were to go to something like, and this is going to look really stupid, but 90, we, we are completely parallel. So you can kind of tweak that and set the default how you like. However, you can change this on the fly, as I will show in a separate video. Moving on, we have the incremental lean amount. So let me find my incremental lean really quick. All right, so I would set to C and Shift-Z. So basically, as I go and I press Z, you can see I'm slowly leaning over. As I go Shift-Z, I'm slowly going back up. And then, let's see, was it Control-Z? No. Ah, Shift-X to go back. But basically, you go in the increments that you set. So that's two and something. So that it would be at a increment of two and a half degrees per, you know, per each time you go to lean. So the higher the value, the more you will lean each time. But then you have your default lean speed. So this is how fast you lean. So if I set this to something like 50, it should be very rapid, like so. It's basically instant. So 10 I found to be a good value. And then we have our crouch, which you can ignore for now, as that has issues with the character movement component. So that may end up being removed. So our free look. So this kind of works in the same way that the max look up and look down did, which was these guys, the max look up and down angle. But this controls the left, right, and up and down. So as I go through and I hold alt here, how far I can look down, how far I can look right, and left. So I know it's a little weird because I have my camera at the red eye and I'm looking at my nose. But this would be something for like hiding your head mesh or setting up a mask for your character. So that's what that controls. And then finally we have firearm collision. So by default we are set to use firearm collision, at least how I have it in this character. And then we have the collision channel. So I want to have a video dedicated to what to do when you first start up the project basically. But I recommend you have a dedicated collision channel like I do here for your firearm collision. So what I mean by that is let's say I walk over to this wood. Obviously, wood is going to block the firearm. As I go through, you know, it pushes the firearm out of the way and all that. Now let's pretend that this target here, let's pretend this is a, I don't know, like a sheet of like hanging, a hanging blanket. Something that's soft that you can walk through. You don't want your firearm to be blocked out of the way. So what you could do is you could select this and you would go to your firearm collision channel and just set it to ignore. So then I have no collision for the firearm. So that's roughly the intended purpose of how you would kind of handle that. So that's again why I recommend you set up a dedicated collision channel. And I would recommend that you set it to be blocking by default. So that way, you know, the majority of the stuff's going to be blocking it anyways. The only stuff you want to not block it, you would be kind of manually selecting either via the actor class or just by manually selecting in the world, depending on your level setup or just how you're setting it up in general. Now that pretty much wraps up the uh, setting side of the character component. Next, next up, I'm going to be showing you how to kind of more functionally use it. So kind of like how I'm using it here, I'm using the character component and in basically every single input, including on begin play for handling the initialization. So that's going to wrap up this video. As always, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join the Discord and I'll try to help you out. And this plugin will be linked in the description below if you're interested. So, I'll see you in the next video.